Welcome back to another episode. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Educating the Reckless what the podcast. Fuck is that? <laughs> With your host Apollo VN. No better, Nina. And we are back once again for another week of educated. We should just say we're back for episode number whatever. I'm not saying no numbers because I don't know the fucking numbers. This is 48. Almost at 50. Almost at 50. Two more weeks. Okay. Anyways. So how's it, how's it been, man? Uh, it's been interesting. Very interesting. So, I have a story, everyone. Yes. Well, let me just start off with, like, the rest of the week. Uh, basically, what did I do? I went out on Saturday. I went to Ada's graduation barbecue. Mm-hmm. And what was Shout really cool, Adam. yes, congratulations. What was really cool about that was, um, as you guys know, I moved, like, eight times in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of those times, I was in elementary school in Mississauga for a couple years. And when I was there, my mom, she, she, my mom was a stay at home mom for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so she decided to, uh, when we had a talent show at the school, she decided that she was going to choreograph, um, an Indian dance with me and two other Indian boys that I had class with. So we used to go, we used to all come to my house every single day after school, practice this dance. My mom sewed their suits, like outfits together and everything. Um, and she made us learn this dance and stuff. And was that your mom and your pops leaving this morning? Yeah, you saw them? Yeah. Oh, okay. She waved at me. She has a cast on her arm, right? <laughs> no, she doesn't have a cast on. Actually, maybe she might have. She has, like, carpal tunnel. She okay, might have had yeah. a thing on her arm. Right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, so, yeah, so then uh, they used to come over whatever we did the dance and shit. And so then I'm at Ada's barbecue, mm-hmm. and this guy comes up to me, and he looks at me. He just opens his arms to hug me, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, no freaking way. It was one of the kids who I did the dance with in elementary school, which was very trippy. And funny enough, he he came with the person who Ada came to my birthday party with. But it was pretty cool. It was kind of like life coming full circle. Mm. Um, and that was cool. And then we went. I went out for a friend's birthday party on Saturday night, mm-hmm. which was cool. Um, nothing crazy really there. And then, okay, so... Um, Keep on, on talking. How's... how's uh... Uh, that's all you did? No, you no, no. I'm going to gonna spill regular? the tea right now. <laughs> you spill the tea? So on Saturday night, I posted a story. And this guy who I like, I was messing around with like months ago, he responded to the story uh, talking about, oh, let me come pick you up, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, no, like, leave me alone. Like, keep in mind, guys, I cut him off after legit two weeks because like he was acting very like he had like these psychopath tendencies and like he was very manipulating. So I was like, I'm not fucking dealing with this shit. So I cut him off. He was, like, weirdly obsessed, too, like, after the first time we hung out. And so I cut him off, and then he was responding to my story on Saturday. And keep in mind, I blocked him everywhere else, but I forgot Snapchat because he never uses it. Okay. And so he responds to my story, whatever, uh, talking about, oh, come over. And I'm just like, no, like, leave me alone, like, whatever. Like, I was being a bitch. Yeah. And so then Monday morning, I wake up, and I get a Snapchat message from him. You guys want to know what it says? Mm, spill the tea, honey. <clears throat> it says, LOL, he has a whole wife and children. When were you in my home? I had to read it twice. He has because a whole wife and children. When were you in my home? <laughs> because I, I thought he was messaging the wrong person. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? She's like, when were you in my home? I'm his wife. Mm. I said, LMFAO, is this a joke? I had no idea. And then she's like, if I delete these messages, do you have his phone number? Can you invite him out this evening so I can lock my door and kick him out? Also, oh, you shit. never answered when you were at my house. So I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I'm actually so sorry. I had no idea at all. I'm shocked. Uh, I said it was like three months ago. And then she's like, okay. I asked her, I'm like, it was the condo, right? Mm -hmm. And then she's like, yeah. I said, funny thing is, because there was like a few kids toys there. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about these kids toys. So I told her, I said, funny thing is, I asked about the kids toys and he said it was his baby cousins. And then his aunt comes to stay with him when she fights with her husband. She said, he's a liar. Anyways, do you have his phone number? Can you ask him to meet up with you? You don't actually have to show up. I just need to kick him out. I lied. I have his phone number, um, but I'm not getting involved in the middle of this fucking mess because it's not my mess to be in. Uh, So. So, so I was just, just like, said, no, you already know, you know, so keep the I just, yeah, I just said, I don't have his number. And then I screenshotted and then she started screenshotting. I just told her, yo, let me know when you're done screenshotting. And then I'm about to delete him. Cause if I delete him now, you can't screenshot. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like I was like team, team player, but you should have just said, Hey, <laughs> Hey bitch. I'm not bitch. What? <laughs> Hey, you already know your your husband's a piece of shit. Why, and like, who why, you fuck, gotta, why you gotta follow up with me? And who the fuck lies on their kids for some pussy? Like, that's mm. fuck. Like, okay, obviously we fucked you guys. Mm-hmm. But, like, who the fuck lies on their kids for some pussy? That's disgusting. I remember I had this one friend. I 
had this one friend, uh, she recently got pregnant. Well, I wouldn't say recently, but yeah. within the past like three, four years, she had gotten pregnant by some dude and he had he had said the same type of thing. Yeah. He's like, yo, these kids got, were always around. He always said they were his cousins and shit like that. Yes. And I'm like, damn. See, you, that's you got, crazy. You got pregnant by a dude who lies on his kids? Oh. Men are trash, man. Like, that's disgusting. And, like, now I don't even... Because he said he was 26 years old. Mm. And, like, now I'm like, is he actually 26 or was he just lying? How old do you think the woman was? I I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. I don't even know what she, she was. was. But she was talking, like, like what old lady do you know who says she has a, he has a whole wife? Like, usually kids around our age say that shit. Yeah, so she's probably young. Oh, damn. That means she's getting to the cheddar if she lives in that expensive Yeah. Condo. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, I, I don't know. But, yeah, so basically I found out I fucked a married man with kids. Mm. I didn't know until Monday morning rolled around. And I haven't, like, messed with him since those, like, four, almost four months ago. Yeah. When I cut him off. But, like, imagine, like, okay, full disclosure, on Saturday he texted me saying I miss eating that pussy. Imagine Whoa. being his wife and, like, reading that message. Like, Whoa. I would be fucking shaking. He said that on Snapchat? He said that on Snapchat. And I save all my conversations on Snapchat for reasons like this. Yeah, you and, said you got caught up. And she, yeah, because she, because once I told her, like, cont- like screenshot, whatever, she screenshotted the whole fucking conversation from, like, the minute we started talking on Snapchat. And I was like, okay, like, do your thing, whatever. So, I don't know. I'm curious to know, like, what, <laughs> how they're going to end up. But, I mean, he's blocked everywhere. So, yeah, that was my life. How was your week? Not, nothing compared to yours. <laughs> <laughs> my life com- is a movie. What can I say? <laughs> oh, what is it? What was that blue face thing? Welcome to the meat show, freak show. My life's a movie. I shoot pornos. Blue face, baby, I right? Okay, well, I don't do all that, but. My life's a movie, apparently. Shoot pornos. I don't shoot pornos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing. Okay. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. You're nothing. I don't do nothing special. Hold on. What did I do? You're going to Six Flags this weekend. Yes. This weekend, but that's that's not this past week. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. I have plans on going to Six Flags, aka Darien Lake, as some of you guys may know. It is located 45 minutes after the border in in New York. New York. Yeah. Technically, New York, the state of New York. Uh, city of Buffalo. Is it Buffalo? I think so. Uh, is it? Is I Buffalo's, don't know. I've never been. Is Buffalo right after the border? Yes. And with the whole Grand Alliance Mall, Gallery Alliance Mall. Yes. Yeah. So it's Buffalo. Okay. Darien Lake, Buffalo. I think so. I fucking know. Okay. I'm gonna go there. I, I've been there last year. It was fun last year. I went with some good people. Uh, trying to go again to see what the you know the whole rides and the whole things are all about. Uh, but what I do this past week, I can't really remember. I was working all this weekend doing a whole bunch of street team events and stuff like that that's fun and throughout the week i was just you know trying to figure shit out tired as hell (laughs) tired i'm always tired you don't even understand i am always i don't understand you're right oh there was one crazy thing that happened also that i forgot to tell you about what's that (gasps) oh my god so I literally had like the craziest week Mm -hmm. on Saturday when I was going downtown to go out. I was on the subway. Right. And there was like this man. He didn't really look too right. Like in the head. Mm -hmm. Um, Like and he was sitting two seats behind me, but the two seats were empty. So it was just him, two seats and then me. Mm -hmm. And we're about to get off at our stop and I'm sitting and I look down in between my shoes and there's like a pool of blood streaming in between my shoes. I turn around. The guy fucking stabbed himself in the leg. I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, call the ambulance, call. I missed my stop because I was like, I was trying not to fucking step all up in this blood, which Mm. ended up getting on my shoe anyways. Mm. And he's like, call the ambulance. (laughs) No, not my Air Forces, (laughs) on my heels. Oh. (laughs) And he's like, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. But he was so calm. And I'm like, what the fuck? So then we pulled the like emergency stop thingy and we got off the train. Mm. But it was actually kind of like, because if you think about it, I was telling my dad about it and he's like, He's like, you know, like, he probably could have stabbed you guys, too. Like, if you think about it, like, he stabbed himself. What if it wasn't himself? What if he just stabbed you guys? I was like, that's true. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. But yeah. People like that, you got to kill. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) People like that, you got to, you know, make sure you watch out for people with mental illness. Like, that was, no, that was, I've never seen that much blood before. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm so lucky I caught it when I did, because it would have got all over my pants. Like, ew. Ugh. Anyways, yeah. Oh man, that was really That's nasty. I don't like being around motherfuckers, man. Yeah, well, I don't like being around people, man. Ain't very friendly. interesting. Very interesting week for myself. All right, so that's the tea. That's the tea you slept with a merry man. <laughs> yeah, that's H that's box. pretty much all everyone's gonna get out of this. Ate your box, blew your. One back of the out. few Toronto men who did. Yes, <laughs> you said he was Jamaican, right? Yeah. So see, he's breaking stereotypes, right? 
Yeah. Toronto man and Jamaican. I told you, man. They all eat pussy, man. They no, get, they don't. They don't all. They don't all. He's fresh from there. He's an immigrant, he's no? The, he came in like 2012, 2013, 2012, I think. 2012. And he like was, if, he's 20, if he's 26, that means so he came he, when he was 20. No, but funny enough, he told me. This is another reason I cut him off after the whole two weeks because I was like, this guy's kind of crazy. Yeah. He told me that um, when he was in Jamaica, he had married a white lady from here yeah. that he met. Like while he worked on the resort there back in 2013, they got married, and then he said they got divorced in 2016. Mm. And I was like, "This guy is crazy! Like I don't need that in my life." So I like he told me he was divorced, whatever. So then when she's messaging me, I'm like, "Oh, so they were just married this whole time?" Or maybe she just you know clingy. Maybe I don't know because he did tell me stories like that. I think they're both lying about something, but either way, the situation is still fucked up because I, there was like, where was she with the kids when I was over? I went over twice. Where was she with the kids? And it was like late at night. And then there was one time where we were on the phone and I heard a kid crying in the back, and he's like, "Yeah, my aunt's here, whatever." But like, if the kids were there, where's where's his wife? I don't know. I don't know. It was a whole mess. But now you guys see, like, there's a reason I cut him off after two weeks. Very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of entertaining though like i really am curious to see like what happens between them no nah, man sometimes you just gotta let them that would let that type of fuck shit be oh, over there oh yeah trust me that's what i'm that, doing that's the type of fuck shit i remember i remember having a friend she was a prostitute right uh-huh. well she was a newly reformed prostitute i'm gonna say that okay she started hoeing at a young age uh i got to rekindle the relationship and i was like oh wow it's been a long time since i seen you how you been catching up and stuff like that uh-huh. and then she was like yeah i've just been hoeing uh but not those type of words, but like okay. I, she's been hoeing, and and I'm like, all right, cool. I was trying to be open minded about the whole thing. I was like, all right, cool, cool. You just selling pussy, whatever, whatever. She's like, her boyfriend's a pimp because most pimps do break their girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, and so her boyfriend's a pimp and, and stuff like that. And he says she, he bought him a whole bunch of shit like Louis Gucci, bought him a gun as well. And uh, she says she stopped fucking with black dudes when it comes to like hoeing because black dudes tend to rob her, so she likes the white guys. And and then what happened was we were hanging out and stuff like that. And then she was like, she kept on looking behind because she said she just recently got into a fight with her boyfriend. Dude bust her lip. I'm like, whoa. Yikes. I'm not going to get involved with that because you fuck yeah. with them type dudes. Hey, man, I'm not here to save nobody. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> so I'm not, I'm here just talking to her and stuff like that. And so she's like, oh, yeah, he left. He took everything, took the dog. No, he, no he's going to come back for the dog. Mm-hmm. And. Dude, dude, uh, black SUV pulls up, and she was like, and she doesn't walk into him. I'm like, all right, cool, let them, you know, handle it. Then you come. were there, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I was there, I was there, I was there. And then I come through, and then the dude, I guess, double backs, and then I see the SUV pull up in the driveway again. I, <laughs> I run, I hop the fence, and I run down the street as fast as I can, fast as I can. I go like I was at. If people know the, if people know Brampton. I hopped over the fence at like I think Peter Robinson and Bovard, or maybe it was Torbrum and Bovard or Father Tobin or, or I don't. And Bovard and I wa- I ran all the way down Bovard all the way down to the Giggling Tomato that used to be there. I think it's still I think it's still there. So I ran all the way down there, and I was like, "Fuck!" And then. After that, I was like, "All right, cool, cool." And that was a near death experience. You know, you know, you still, <laughs> near I, death. Experience. I, I I still fuck with you, but you know. And then her man ended up texting me off her phone, like, yo, I know where you live, pussy. Da, 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 da. I'm like, all right, pff, I'm pussy then. You can have her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want no I don't want no pussy from her. I never, I never smashed her before. It was just a friend. It's just, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. If this is the type of energy you bring with, fuck you. Off the rip. And yeah, I was like, you, and she was like, I'm sorry. He just got my phone. He's like, nah, bro. You can't nah. mess with people who do sketchy shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was you like, can't. all right. Yeah. My, I told my one of my, told, I told my friend Vince, she was like, yo. He's like, yeah, just leave the bitch alone. If she's trying to call you, just only pick up. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And ever since then, I just never. You should just blocked her number. I literally, that's what I did with this guy. I blocked him. After those two weeks, I blocked him everywhere. I was just, I missed Snapchat. Yeah. Like, I'm talking WhatsApp, phone number, Instagram, everywhere. I think even, no, I didn't have him on Facebook. Man, I just, I ain't, man. That's what I'm saying. You do that whole shit, that prostitute shit, just leave me out of it. <laughs> you do any sketchy shit, just yeah, leave me out of it. And if you're fucking married with kids, don't even fucking talk to me. I don't be talking to type of girls that do shit like that. I see. I like my, I like myself a nice, you know, wholesome woman. Wholesome woman. Got to get a job, work hard. You know, might hold a little bit for free, <laughs> for free, just because you have to get for pleasure. But on some real shit, I'm not trying to be with none of that, that, that dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't I, seem very safe. Last, last thing I want to do is people who are like, yo, he died over some pussy that wasn't even his. Like, <laughs> oh, 
I don't do no shit like that. All right, so let's get into the topics. Right? We got a lot okay. of things to talk about, a few things to talk about, somewhat, somewhat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so did you hear about the story about the Canadian woman getting left on the Air Canada? Tra- yeah. But, like, I didn't read into it. Do you yeah. know, like, details of what happened? So what happened was he fell asleep on the plane. It landed. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> None of the stewards, the air attendants, flight attendants, woke her up. And so after, so after it lands and stuff like that, I swear to, that means they didn't even clean the plane. Yeah, that, that has to mean they didn't that clean they, the plane. That, they didn't clean the plane. That means they just all waited at the front, said bye to everyone, and yeah, got right off. Got right off, right? So she was there, she stayed on the plane, and then the, after the plane parks and you know drops everyone, out, it parks like in a parking lot in the airport. Mm-hmm. And so she woke up two after the two hours after the flight landed. And it was dark. She said she was cold. She couldn't re- even have good service to call people. But so yeah. she kept on flashing her light through the thing. And one of the people saw it and wa- walked out and train and walked on the plane and helped her get off. And it was like, <laughs> yo, but like, how do you not wake up when the plane is landing though? Like it's loud. Yo, and like I, you feel it when it hits the ground and shit. Yeah, I honestly I don't know. Maybe she did it on purpose so she could like sue them. Maybe because two hours after the flight landed. Like that's and crazy, no, and no one, no one woke you up. They didn't clean the plane. Air like, Canada, Air, Air, Air Canada got ranked with the, um, well, the second best airline in the I think world, third, third best in North America. In North America, I think. And to do shit like this, I mean, I guess so. What the fuck? This is like Spirit Airlines, yo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. Maybe, maybe there's more to the story. Like maybe she caused a commotion on the plane earlier, and everyone was just like scared to like even nah. bother with her, or like I just don't get how she really didn't wake up when it landed. That's weird. No, so it says she. It, it, there's nothing else. It's like that. my ears pop like while we're in there. I can barely sleep while I'm in the air. I can't like let alone while we're landing. She was freezing cold. She still buckled to her seat, but the aircraft was parked. Uh, she said that she had experienced reoccurring night terrors since the incident took place. Come on, come on. Where, where see this? I'm saying, where did this happen? Uh, in, Here, uh, Toronto. Yeah, a flight, a flight from Quebec to Toronto. Uh, uh, Air Canada has confirmed the incident occurred and is investigating. Miss Adams said on Facebook that she woke up around midnight, a few hours after the flight landed, freezing cold, still trapped in her seat in complete darkness. She said in the experience was terrifying. Miss Adam managed to call her friend Deanna Dale to let her know where she was Why she when her phone the- died less than a minute into the call. She was unable to charge the phone as the plane was shut down, obviously. And where would you charge your phone on the plane? I've never, I was never able to charge my phone on the plane, anyways. I, I D- was, but wait, where? yeah, because there's outlets right in front of you. But if it's if it's the plane is off, then you mm. can't charge it. Miss Dale called Toronto Pearson Airport and told them Miss Adams' whereabouts while she was on board. Miss Adams managed to locate a torch in the uh, cockpit of the plane to attempt to attract attention. Uh, she found a. She was found by a luggage cart operator who was she, who, were, who claimed that she was in shock. Miss Adams said Air Canada's staff offered her a limousine and a hotel, but she declined, wanting to return home as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, man. She, Air Canada apologized. Air Canada confirmed Miss Adams' account to multiple publications and said it was reviewing the incident. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, this is see, this is this is what I mean by people nowadays are just getting jobs, just get money. Yeah, that's that's literally that, that's it. it. That's it. People don't give a fuck about their positions, whatever. No. They're trying to get money, and this is a because people are Prime dying, example. people dying in hospitals because of poor nursing staff, poor doctor care about people left on planes after. <laughs> yo, you, you. But I really up. just think this lady, like, I I think something's missing. I think she just did it just to get something out of it like there's no way she just fell asleep like that and didn't wake up it doesn't make sense think about it you have to you many people have to be on the plane to get off yeah to to move you out the way to get their stuff out of the compartment like the lights turn on the person speaks over the thingy mabob like people are probably passing over you because you're still sitting in your chair they're supposed to clean the cleans right after right yeah all right, man. This is uh, something. Something doesn't make that sense. That looks like a dastard. I when I heard that story on the radio a few days ago, I was like, I laughed, I giggled, I snickered. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how the fuck you end up like that? Yeah, I don't know, man. Don't um, know. they're investigating the incident. Someone's gonna get fired. 
<laughs> someone has to or get fired. Or the whole plane crew. <laughs> someone has to get fired. This, someone has to. I wonder who they're going to rock, paper, scissors for it, though. Uh, rock, paper, scissors. It's like, you, you getting fired. Like, think about the whole flight attendant, like, the whole flight attendant staff that were on that from Quebec yeah. to... The pilots might get it. No, I don't think the pilots will get it. I think the flight attendant staff You think so? Yeah. Um... Kanye West took jabs at Drake and J. Cole in a leaked snippet. Did you hear it? I didn't even hear the snippet, but I saw I like, didn't either. Reports, I saw reports of it, and I was like, I really don't care. Me neither. It's an, it didn't come out. No. And it's... plus, Kanye was not the guy that really takes shots like people. Like mm-hmm. he was. I guess he might have been frustrated. He might have wanted to vent on a record. Well, he said, because, what's it called? I guess because the others took shots at him. So he... Yeah, J. Cole did take shots of him on uh, whatever that fucking... And he, like, subtly... He didn't straight up mention J. Cole, but Drake, he did. So, like, yeah, I don't know. It didn't come out, though. It doesn't matter. It was supposed to be on Pusha T's album, apparently, the song. But it obviously, it didn't make it. Why would it be on Pusha T's album? I don't know. After the fact. I don't know. I think that's what it No, does. before the fact, I mean. I, I don't know. I. I don't know. That's what I read. All right, dude. Um, no more Young Money Cash Money projects from Drake because they said his best in the world pack of the two singles he released. Um, they deleted, uh, like they got rid of the Young Money Cash Money credits and it's licensed to imprint Frozen Moments Republic LLC. Frozen, which, Frozen, Frozen Moments, which is his mysterious uh, label, right? Is it? Yeah. Which, I mean, we already kind of knew that anyways, though. Like, because didn't he say on his last album that was the last one that he was going to release under Young Money? And that's why he made it a double album. That was the whole thing. Tupac tried doing the double album thing when he was on Death Row, but Show didn't, didn't allow work. that. Yeah, well, I mean, I show. guess... I don't know. I didn't know double albums worked as, like, two albums. I, I mean, I, I... Yeah, I... Like, it, it makes sense, but then it doesn't really make sense. Because then it's like, if you're releasing it all at the same time, I feel like... It shouldn't make sense. But if you're releasing it, like, let's say you release one and then the next week you release a surprise one, then fine. That makes sense. I'll get it. Yeah. Then that would make, that would be more fair in my personal opinion. Mm. But I'm not a rapper, so what do I know? I'm not so, I'm not a lab, label exec, so I don't know how this whole <laughs> thing works. Okay. This is the thing I really want to talk about because, as you know, which you actually missed, last week in the office, we had a very big fight. Mm. Um, on the LeVar Ball and Molly Quirum thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was literally four guys against me. And they just were not understanding. Um, I guess like... Okay, let me pre- let me preface it with this. These guys in general don't really have um manners or they're they're creepy sometimes mm. i'll say i'll leave it at that they're creepy sometimes okay and so we were talking about the the comments whatever um one of them ended up leaving out in the middle of the conversation which i think was very smart of him um because i think if he continued talking i would have punched him in the face mm. um but things got very heated to the point where yeah like we were screaming at each other in the office like for a whole entire hour on friday this is a dysfunctional office it is very dysfunctional we were literally screaming at each other in the office um One of the new guys ended up stepping in and actually saying he agrees, completely agrees with me. And so the whole thing was, um, before we even get into that quickly, uh, just before, so with LeVar Ball and the Molly Quirum thing, um, Des Bryant, he came out, he's a football player, and he said that he basically tweeted um, his support for LeVar, but he said what he said pissed me off too he tagged molly and he said i'm late i just seen the espn video of you and lavar just being real you owe that man an apology straight up i didn't even sense foul play from him you dramatically overreacted mature women like Dor- doris burke need those jobs i think he's dumb she didn't overreact she literally just said okay let's stay on track here and then continued on no no i don't think he's talking about that it's talking about the after behind but she behind. didn't say anything to like get people to attack yeah, it or yeah, anything and that's true too she so, has this, she has she hasn't comment exactly everyone has been everyone's been on talking making about their it. own thing with yeah. it so but like the thing is she should come out and talk <laughs> Like, I mean, that's her, the least she could do. If she, if she didn't, if she feels like it was, so maybe that's the thing though. Maybe she was genuinely uncomfortable, which obviously you could see in the clip. So if she was on, un- no, but if she was uncomfortable about it, why does she need to come out and talk about it? Lavard is just defending himself because he's saying he didn't mean it in that way. But I think if he truly didn't mean it in that way, he should go to Molly, and, not in public, but he should maybe, you know, go apologize to her. And if she, if he did, then she should come out and say, you know what guys, Lavar apologized, whatever it's done. But wait, sorry. Before before you say anything else, um, <clears throat> I also think he's saying Doris Burke should do it because she's old and nobody's trying to smash her. Like, whereas Molly's more of a younger reporter, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and also, um, there was something else that pissed me off here. Okay, yeah. So 
I feel like men who are guilty of, guilty of justifying the creepy actions are the ones who think this is normal. Um, and not not all of them, because I don't think you're a creep. Um, but the poll that I posted was kind of testimony to that. Obviously, I'm not going to spill details on who voted which option. But I will tell you guys that the option where I said it wasn't creepy was legit all guys who said it wasn't creepy. There was a few guys who had some sense and said, yes, it was creepy. And I it was girls who voted I'm, up I'm, on that side. I'm still on the same thing. I, I looked at it. I was like, I, I didn't sense any foul play. Well, I also think so. I also think with Des Bryant, too, the funny thing is uh, he so I I looked him up because I was like, like, has he done anything creepy? Because my whole theory is the guys who are the creeps are the ones who are justifying this. And funny enough, uh, he actually had some domestic disputes with his mom. Um, eh, growing up as a teenager, yeah, I can see that. No, 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 no. Like as a grown man in oh. in the NFL. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so he had some domestic disputes with his mom, whatever. Um, they obviously have like some. He like slapped her in the face with a baseball cap and grabbed her by her shirt or something and and it ripped her shirt and shit. <laughs> some players are very aggressive. Some crazy shit like that. But yeah, so basically we had the huge fight in the office about it. Um, and I was just saying like, you know, how either way as a woman, if she feels creeped out about it, she can feel creeped out about it she because, hasn't spoken anything the, about it but that's why I'm saying. So if she, if she hasn't spoken about it, then that just goes to show you, yes, she was uncomfortable with it. No. If she came up, cause no. what else would she need to come out to say? If she didn't, if she said it was taken in the wrong context, then she would come out and say, you guys, this is the wrong context. So why does she need to come out if it's being interpreted in the right way? It, what's the right way? It, it, Her, like, it being creepy. Because no, she's seeing everyone saying that it's creepy. Majority of people uh, are saying it's creepy. She's seeing that and she's like, yeah, I, obviously she made it pretty clear she was uncomfortable when she's like, okay, let's stay on track here. Like, Because he, he threw over a loop. I, my, my thing is, I don't think it was, I don't think it was creepy. I just thought it was in poor taste. Well, but because I, I, I even tweeted about this. I was like, I think it's only in poor taste because when you're on ESPN, you're supposed to act with a certain decorum and professionalism and stuff like that. And LeVar Ball is more of a cheeky type of guy. He's, uh, you know, doesn't act with the same decorum as Steve, a, Stephen A. Smith and all the other guys on there. So when he said it, I was like, all right, I don't really think nothing of it. I well, didn't see. I didn't see it as because I saw the video. I heard it. I was like, ah, I don't really. But no, I I still stand on what I said. By it's creepy as fuck. I would be uncomfortable as fuck. Like I would have done the same thing she did. But so she when we had nothing. her saying, okay, let's stay on track here. Like I would have been embarrassed. What are you supposed to say? I, I don't know. But like some people can shut down after stuff like that happens, especially if you're like think about people who are like victims of like sexual assault or something like that, and something like that is said to them, they're gonna like immediately they're going to feel uncomfortable and they might shut down on it. To be honest, so, I think people put a little, way, way too much stock into it. No, I, I want Molly to speak on it. I though. think it was creepy as fuck, but so let me tell you this. So we when we had the huge fight in the office about it and I was telling them, I said, you guys will never, because I've seen the people who I was specifically arguing with, I've seen them like, like just doing things or saying things or like certain actions towards people who are a lot younger than them that they shouldn't be doing like creepy shit basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and I told them, I said, you guys will never understand until you have a daughter. Like when you see, when you're out with your daughter walking down the street and you see old men checking her out in some type of way or like just weird shit, like you will never understand until then. They're like, well, I have nieces and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's not the same thing. You're not with them every single day. And you know, like comments such as, this was under, I heard this after the fact, someone said under their breath, this is why I had a son. So, I mean, that just goes to mm. prove my point in the first place. Um, also, someone said, LeVar is not a creep. And when one of the new guys stepped in to defend me, he said, how the fuck do you know LeVar Ball's not a creep? You don't know him personally, which is facts, because at the same time, no one thought R. Kelly was a creep until they saw the sex tapes come out. He was a creep well before the sex tapes, but nobody knew that because nobody knows him personally. So I feel like people just saying, oh, well, LeVar this, LeVar that, you don't know him, you know? And at woman has a right to feel the way like you can feel uncomfortable when these comments are made the same way anyone who is like let's say let's say a white person came up to me and called me a packy mm. i can feel offended by that because as a white person you shouldn't be fucking saying that to me that's degrading or the same way you can feel offended if i came up here and just started saying the n-word like you you have a right to feel offended because i'm not black you know that same way is the same way a woman can feel uncomfortable when things are said to her by a man in some sort of manner or some sort of tone that comes off as creepy like, well, now when you get into all that, now you, you get into specifics about certain things. It's like, all right, so it's like it's like the whole saying is when people are in the hood, they're able to they do certain things that are not necessarily acceptable or recognized with outside of the hood. Yeah, it's like right, you grow up eating fucking cheese whiz and, and shit like that, thinking that is normal. Think, and then when you go into the real world, you go like you start doing some shit like that. It's like, 
hold on, that's not that's not something over here. That's not the type of decorum you're supposed to represent over on this side. Mm-hmm. The same thing. I feel like the same thing in this situation is just Molly Quinn. She hasn't said anything about it, but a whole bunch of people who want to take up for her and want to, you know, bray her mantle of you know the Me Too movement are necessarily jumping down and accusing. LeVar Ball of whatever you said and taking in that type of context. Molly Quem hasn't said shit and she kind of just riding the, the coattails the same way Taylor Swift rode the coattails of everyone else being mad at Kanye West. And then I'm pretty sure when she does speak about it, she's going to take the victim role because it makes sense for her. Right? It could have been, it, this thing could have honestly been solved same day. But you know what? It went viral, and she hasn't said shit, and she's letting people talk attack uh, LeVar Ball. So I'm pretty sure when she's going to speak on it, she's going to have some long-winded post, long-minded commentary about it, and then she's going to t- you know take the mantle of the Me Too movement. But that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you guys know? Like The same way a lot of you guys are assuming LeVar isn't a creep or he just has this cheeky demeanor to him or whatever without knowing him personally, how do you not know? I'm not saying I don't know this for a fact or not, but how do you not know Molly wasn't a victim of sexual assault maybe when she was younger or something and something like that triggered her? You know was what it, I mean? Was it trigger? Did she break down? No, but Did that's why I'm physically but like people deal shocked? with things in different ways. Let's say, let's say I was sexually assaulted. I'm pretty sure my reaction would be completely different and I would have started crying or like shut down because things like that are traumatic he, he to people. Said, you can switch gears yes, but yo, when you're okay, think about it this way. I don't expect you to understand. I truly and honestly, I don't oh, expect man. any man to understand it. I don't because I, you will, you will never get it until you have a daughter of your own. You will never get it. No, and the I thing get is, it, no, but, but because honestly, now you're laughing at sexual assault victims. Like no. if people like that, things can easily trigger them, or someone who's been raped that can trigger them too. So it's I like I don't know that per se that would trigger them. You're on la- national television and a man la- d- does a little smirk and a little giggle. <laughs> you could switch gears with me anytime. That's a little fucking creepy. And he's how much like how many years older than you? Knows you're married. Yeah, he, like well, if it was sexual, then he, Levar's giving her consent. <laughs> I I will say I will say at the end of the day, I do think the whole ban from ESPN was a little excessive. I don't think that was necessary yeah. at all. Um, I do think that was excessive as fuck. People don't know how to handle shit no more because of the whole fucking movement going on. Well, People just want to just go, do far extreme and just say, "No, nah, fucking have a conversation." If Marley was truly offended. Then shit wouldn't be the way it is right now. I also but, think they, they said they're like people have been trying to get Lavar Ball off of TV for a long time. So they, this he, is just they, their because ex- he talks. Excuse. To, they talk. He, he talks a lot. People loved him because he was talking a lot. Yeah. And now since what he does something, and it's like all right, fuck it, let's get him out. Yeah, I, don't, I think the whole thing is. I've seen some creepy shit, but I don't know. Like my my mind was in the gutter when I was. Well, no, but shit. even so, my example I even brought up to these guys here was when we're in meetings and our big boss tells us he says the term like "let's switch gears" all the fucking time. And I asked all the guys in there. I said when he says that, and I just put his fucking name out there. I'll bleep it out when he says that. Um, do you like? Like I don't feel uncomfortable at all when he says that because he does not saying it in a in a in this tone and this demeanor that's making it fucking weird. Like, and they 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 laughed because they know it's true. Like they agreed with it. They were like, yeah, like you're right. He does. It's not creepy when he does it. Not cre- I don't think it's creepy at all. I think it's creepy as fuck. And I'm gonna stand for stand with what I stand on. So that's my opinion. There was also um well so since we're talking about it anyways there's another clip that resurfaced on twitter of um max kellerman he's another person part of first take and um molly and steven steven <laughs> steven's just a smart guy i will say that because anytime something goes down he's always just like what the fuck why would you say that but um there was a clip where molly they were talking about something and then molly's like can i fantasize for a second like they're talking about sports teams whatever can i fantasize for a second and max is like yeah you could fantasize anytime let's just bring your husband jalen rose in here and then she's like no i was talking about sports like i just feel like like that to me jalen rose yeah they've been married since last year oh congratulations and so that like that one to me wasn't creepy only because inappropriate yes on tv but i don't think it was creepy because he's not insult he's not in in putting himself into the equation as like, yeah, fantasize about me. Like, no, like bring your husband in here, fantasize about him. But I still think it was inappropriate as fuck. Guys just don't know how to act around girls when they're in an industry. Like the sports industry is mainly dominated by men. They just don't know how to act around girls in those industries because they never had them there before. But it's like, yo, like just get it together. If Stephen A. Smith both times, both with the Max Kellerman and the LeVar Ball thing was able to be like, yo, you guys like shut up. Like when it happens, you know there's men out there who know like you shouldn't be saying those things 
while you're on the job. Like there's a, it's a workplace thing. Like, I don't know. There's things that's been said to me at work where I'm like, yo, I had to put someone in check once because like they were saying weird fucking shit and it turned into this huge thing. Like, again, that's the problem. It can never be like, it can never be like, like a man will never accept like, okay, what I said made you feel creeped out. I'm sorry. They will never accept that they made you feel a certain way. Your feelings are invalid all the time as a woman, like seriously all the time. It's happened to me multiple times and it's like, it's annoying as fuck. Cause it's like, yo, I'm creeped the fuck out. Like just leave me alone. But it happens all the time. Like, I don't know. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Speak on it. That's all. Speak on it. That's all I had to say. All right, then. You got it off your chest? <laughs> yes. All right, then. That's good. Uh, so what if this Fetty Bop? Uh, fuck Fetty Bop. I mean, okay. I don't really care. We gotta do it. Dude got one eye, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's under investigation for felony battery. Yeah, like uh, how you get your ass beat up with dude with one eye? Man? Well, the girl said she, apparently she's claiming, but I saw there was another side to the story, but he I didn't. Miss, he see missing what it death said. perception. <laughs> <laughs> she said that he choked her and slapped her because she called the girls he invited over he's ugly. Like, he's like, uh, uh, <laughs> so dumb shut up um yeah i don't know but then another one of the other girls who was there claimed something else happened and that didn't go down so oh tristan thompson don't sound like a bitch ass yeah well uh, so on the last tristan, episode no. of keeping up with the kardashians it was the jordan lloyds and uh like that whole reveal about the cheating thing yeah. and she uh hasn't admitted that she fucked him huh I don't know. I I didn't watch the episode yet. I'm gonna watch it tonight. Still, but so she yeah. so Chloe was talking to uh, Court and Scott, and then uh, they were talking about how once Tristan admitted, like, yes, it did happen. Like, I did make out with her. Mm-hmm. Then he started telling Chloe, like, I'm gonna kill myself and stuff. Oh, and like, then, it, they more than made out. He was piping it for like a uh, oh few, yeah, like a few, month beforehand. They yeah, were saying they were yeah. So um, he said that he was gonna kill himself, and then Chloe's like, well, Scott was like, that's not really fair to you. Like, how is he just gonna say that? while you're going through all this and now you have to worry about that too like you know you can't just come out and say and Chloe's right you can't just come out because something didn't go right and just all of a sudden be like I'm gonna kill myself now who's to say he didn't have suicidal thoughts before this we don't know that but if this was just your first instinct like yeah I'm gonna kill myself like shut up there's really people out there who like really do feel this way about life and it's almost like an insult like so do it then fuck I don't know, that shit's like... If, if, a girl, if a girl said that shit to me, like, I'm gonna kill myself, don't leave me, I'm gonna kill myself, then fuck you ain't It's gonna... just dumb, because now, but, but like, what? we saw the way he was acting afterwards, like, he wasn't, he wasn't acting like he was gonna kill himself, that's for sure, he oh, was like... running around with every little hoe in town. Yeah. Like, immediately afterwards. Yeah. Like, middle fingers to the paparazzi and everything. Yeah. So it's like, yo, like, you were just doing it just to make her, like, and the thing is, like, I feel like he knows that Chloe's, like, she, like obviously really really loved him and so i think he was just taking advantage of that fact and that's why he said it but i don't know because after he said it she texted his friend savaz to check up on him or whatever and i don't know but i'm gonna watch the episode tonight so very evil dude man he's also a jamaican man from brampton so Mm. (laughs) could we expect anything less you put them you put a man that box look at you stereotyping (laughs) you just brought two jamaicans two different things no. Anyways, um, Nicki Minaj said that her and her boyfriend have a marriage license. All right, so I really got to get a Nicki, bro. Like, she yeah. came out all last year saying queen this, queen that, a queen's supposed to hold herself like this. And then, lo and behold, she ends up marrying this bum-ass dude with, like, 18 kids, nine he has felonies. that many kids? I, I didn't no know that. Clue. I don't oh. know. Yeah, a bunch of kids, a few felonies. A rape, rape, he's yeah. a sexual predator or whatever. Yeah, and it's like... Like on ta- the list. He's tattoos on his neck. Got her name tatted on him. And we look at him like, who is this bum-ass dude? And she's like, I'm in love. I think she's settling. And it's like, Nikki, what the fuck? I think... All the guys you've been with, and this is who you settled with, you've been with? You've been Nas. With Nas, Safari, Meek, Safari. Meek. I don't know who, probably some other Like, dudes. stay on your level. You've been with... And then you go fall back to this. I mean, to be honest, with the guy, I cause I salute him because he's supposed to marry up. He's supposed to do. He's supposed to not settle. He's supposed to get the baddest thing out there. But she looks but stupid. Nikki? Yeah, I she's think she's depressed, man. She has to be from, depressed. Yeah, from my perspective, looking in, I feel like she's trying to compete with 
Cardi, honestly. You think so? Truly and honestly. Because when did we ever hear about Nikki wanting to get married before this or anything like that? It's she, like, said she, she did say she wanted to get kids and things eventually, but... I mean, I don't know. I, I, I said it before, too, last time. Like, I thought the whole initial reason that Nikki is so upset with Cardi is because Cardi's doing better than her and people actually like her for who she is. And she's married, has a kid, whatever. But, like, yeah, now Nikki comes out and she's going to marry this guy. And it's like, apparently they knew each other, what, when they were younger and whatever, but... At the same time, it's like, bro, he's on a sexual offender list. Like, he has to go do those check-ins and shit. Like, I don't know. Shit is weird. I mean, if you're happy, you're happy, but I guess. I don't know. I don't rate this. Damn, Nikki. Never go for someone who's lower than you. Damn, Nikki. You really did this? And she called Miley Cyrus a Purdue chicken. (laughs) What's Purdue chicken? Is that that some type of uh, Trinidadian thing type of shit? Purdue chicken? I don't know, but um, I thought of a rubber chicken when she said it. She, because Miley apparently said some shit about Nikki in an interview, and then Nikki was like, "I saw you just after you psych- sucked Mike Will made its dick in the studio." Whoa! And now you want to wear pink wigs and act like me and talk on the Queen? Some Purdue shit. Chicken. Oh, Purdue <laughs> Chicken is a brand. Oh, it's like chicken cutlets. Ah, uh, okay. It's a brand. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, do you think she's gonna last? Like, do you think they're actually gonna get married? I think they're more than going to get married. They're going to get married and he's going to impregnate her. <laughs> and then he's going to ask for child support. As he, as he should. As he should. <laughs> he should have he should got her pregnant as of right, like two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but Or as of last year. I don't, I don't know. know. I just feel like she's going to have this like breakdown in a couple years and come out and be like, yeah, I really wasn't fucking happy. I was just doing it she's, to impress the rest of the world. She's depressed, man. Do shit for yourself, man. Not She's for depressed. other people. Nikki, Nikki Minaj is depressed, and I'm sad to see it, man. I didn't think this day was ever going to come. Well, it's here. It's here, man. It's here, and she's depressed. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> she marrying this dude. This bu- I'm not going to call him a bum or nothing, but... This, He's not on her level. Yeah, I'm going to just say He's that. Really not shout to him level. at the same, same time. I wonder shout what he did like before dating Nikki. Like, what was his job? You know, slanging dick. You know, <laughs> holding it down in prison, I guess. Because you can't... Yeah, you can't really get a job as a sexual... Offender. You can't get a job. Stop playing. You can't get a job. I mean, it's hard. What's it called? When I watched When They See Us, when they were put on the sexual offender list, they couldn't barely get a job. Like, it was impossible. Yeah, but you still get a job. You said barely get a job. I mean, I'm sure you could work at, like, a convenience store or something. Just work at, work at places you don't have to work very intimately with children. Or, but it wasn't even that when I, when they said, when they were watching, when we were watching When They See Us, they were saying, like, the one guy, it's like, okay, well, that guy's a convicted felon, so if you're, if they put you on kitchen duty with him, and a cop walks in and see you're both convicted felons working together or whatever, then guess what? You violated your probation, you're going back to jail. I didn't think of it. It was, like, that hard. I don't know. I don't know, something. But it just, basically. How the hell they're free, and then they're still on probation Basically, basically, they're they're not joking when they say, like, once you're in the system, you never get out. Which I didn't realize until I watched that movie, like, how extensive it really gets. Yeah. But. They want to kind of keep you captive. But I was, I was, I thought it was only, um, it was only against, against the probation or bail, or bail hearing to associate yourself with, um, convicted felons or gang members. I think because these guys were. When you're on that type of bill, but if you're if you release because someone admitted to crime, well, no, this was before they admitted to the crime, so this is just them being released before the actual guy who did it actually admitted. Oh, so they released out the So this yeah. was a few of them who were actually released, but yeah. there was still the one who was in jail yeah. until the guy actually came out and said he did it. Yeah. So, but the few who were released were were being told that kind of stuff, like oh. they can't work with on kitchen duty with this guy because then they're gonna get sent back in and like yeah. all that shit. But once it got like dropped, then it was dropped. Yeah. Did you watch the BT words by the way? Nah, nah, I didn't get to watch it. Me neither. To be honest, I want to watch. I want to be on BT. I want to be on BT. I saw your thing. I want to be on the BT. I want to get there. I want to be on the BT Awards. I want to figure, figure out some way to get there. Operation of BT Twenty. Why don't you use your Apollo for the People platform to apply for a media accreditation and do it that way? Uh, uh, uh give me a year. Let's see how much followers I get. In here. I think you could do that because I know someone that I went to school with in Baltimore who did it. He started his own kind of brand and um he applied like it wasn't very popular but he applied for accreditation and he covered it i think two years ago mm. a few of them went over and covered it like that this, this would probably have been a dope year to do it they had that blue carpet yeah and... it would have been a good year to do yeah. it yeah. i'm okay. gonna try 2020 2020 i want to see what i could do okay um 
Uh, so we talked about this briefly. Well, you raised the question: How come um, black people aren't getting paid their reparations? What, what did we talk about? It was oh, something... it was gay people getting uh, yes. paid reparations in the UK. Yeah. So uh, you had brought up the question: How come black people haven't gotten their reparations? And yeah, I think last briefly, week they went yeah. to Capitol Hill for a reparation conversation. Danny Glover fucked it up. Um, <laughs> fucked it up. He had no plan. Yeah. <laughs> had well, no fucking plan about reparations. It's... Yo, man. I, I'm although we're in Canada, right? Me seeing what's going on in terms of like people who were like kidnapped, kidnapped from the continent of Africa through the transatlantic slave trade and brought back to America and helped bring up America's economics, wealth, and stuff like that. And them trying to ask for reparations, not even asking, but them trying to get reparations for themselves and have no fucking plan is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. You had the opportunity to. It enlist a whole bunch of people who had like a plan about reparations numbers and stuff and you go to Capitol Hill and fuck it up Danny <laughs> <laughs> fucked it up and he had someone else do it too he had someone else. you fucked it up Are you, there's so many people talking about money numbers and and they talk about reparations for like the actual descendants of slaves and, yeah you know what I mean like, well so the Senator Mitch McConnell he said reparations were not a good idea yeah. and he said that it was already made up to Americans when they selected Barack Obama as president and he was also somebody who was really like he said something while Barack was in office he said something like we can only let him have one term like he can't have more than that well he's he's a, a, a man of perpetual doubt but um but so I was reading into who else the U.S. has paid reparations to. Yeah. Um, the Japanese yeah. are some of them. Um, there were some indigenous folks as well. Yeah. Um, some uh, people from a town in Florida that got burned down by the KKK back in like 1923. Uh, Rosewood? Uh, I don't know what it was called. But uh, basically, yeah. And then um, there was also survivors of police abuses in Chicago, victims of forced sterilization. Um yeah, but a lot of the things with this, with these reparations were um, like the money, it would be paid out to the victims, but it wouldn't really, or it wouldn't even be, like it wouldn't even got that far. Like Yeah, it was Rosewood, the Rosewood Massacre. Yeah. So, in Florida. Yeah, so like the money never even got that far with those people, but I think it's crazy the fact that America's paying it out to all these people except for... I feel like because they know it's such a big population, it's a fuck ton of money they're going to have to give out. And we're in 2019 where people aren't going to settle and just, if it goes and it doesn't get out to them, they're not going to say anything about it. It's not 1923 anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to, they're going to bother them about it. There's going to be protests, whatever. But yeah, I feel like that's why they're holding back on it. And because obviously they're racist too, but I mean, (laughs) that was an obvious fact. Black people in America, they if they're given an the opportunity, they should demand. They shouldn't ask. They should start demanding because, fuck. Yeah. The more the more the more they hold off, the more it gets complicated on how to repay mm-hmm. reparations. Because now you're talking about black people who may be immigrated from their first ge- first generation or second generation uh, of Americans, black Americans. Now they feel like they're old entitled to it because they've been a part of America for so long, and. They are actually, you know, put in the same type of category as a as a descendants of African slave Americans because once you're black in America, you're black, and it's fucked up. Yeah. Well, but yeah. The, the the town was Rosewood. It was like one of the uh, very pro- very profitable neighborhood inside, uh, ran by black people, and the KKK didn't like it. And they burned it down. Burned it down twice. Oh, twice! I didn't know twice. twice. Shit. <laughs> I'm not the laugh, but. They burned that shit down twice. Yikes. Because the first time they were, I first time I believe they burnt it down and then they rebuilt it uh-huh. and they burnt it down and massacred a whole bunch of shit. I could be wrong, but I believe I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. The last thing on the list, 72 officers in Philly have been pulled from the streets and I think 21 in St. Louis for allegedly making racist Facebook posts. Um, 72 officers? Yeah. In Philadelphia? 72 in Philly yeah, and 22 in St. Louis. Or wait. No. Yeah, 22 in St. Louis. Yeah. Philadelphia? You guys lost a whole bunch of enforcement to kind of keep the peace. Because they said, yeah, basically they... Uh, there, so there's a, a, a group called the Plain View Project who compiled a bunch of social media posts. So it wasn't like the police who were doing an inside... Look you, remember, you remember those uh, Facebook groups back in the day that the exposing hoes around the GTA? Like, what was it? Was it sluts or catties or? I don't know. I don't know, man. I forget the word called, but there's a bunch of groups of just guys exposing girls that are giving up the pussy. 
That's crazy. Crazy. Um, so yeah, so this group called the Plain View Project, they decided to compile a bunch of social media posts from all these cops. Um, and then after they brought the receipts to the the Philadelphia mm-hmm. police, whatever, um, they launched an investigation into the public database of social media posts by officers, which included Confederate imagery as well as anti Muslim sentiments, violent rhetoric and racist comments. But so while they're looking into this, um, they're also seeing if um, if the speech is protected by what's that uh, thing first something I don't know some what's the thing where you can say what you want it's pre- a First Amendment first that Amendment. yeah they're checking to see because if it is basically an example would be an opinion on a matter of public concern that may be unpopular but yeah. it doesn't include threats of violence or pejorative language against any protected class yeah that's what the whole um hate speech things uh people who have like hate rallies and stuff like that that's yeah. what they kind of stand on uh freedom of speech because they're not necessarily inciting violence but it's more so of a cathartic thing yeah and you know stuff like that so yeah this happened um i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing but everything that you, you might be on like a facebook group or some type of group of like guys people smash and say yo this is a chick you gotta go to. Wow, you really think I'm like that? No, I'm not saying you're like that, but I'm just saying I'm just saying every guy is different. Um no. Like I might be on a thing. Just one of I guess one of my fears was is that like if somebody secretly recorded me without me knowing. No, nah, but that, that's uh, get, get that's record, being recorded. Being recorded, you could you could go like, yeah, I didn't know, but like being listed as like, yo, that's the go-to hoe. That's, <laughs> that's different. No, I don't think I'm listed as a go-to hoe anywhere. <laughs> you don't think you don't think that you, your face is compiled up with a whole bunch of other chicks going like, yo. I really hope not. These are the chicks that you got to go to get the dick wet. No, Isn't I hope crazy? not. I, I really hope not. Hey, man. Anyways. I hope that's not. I'm I, looking for a boyfriend. You're really throwing off the whole. If I see you on one of those, I'm like, fuck, you lost. <laughs> would you show me? <laughs> I would, but I'm like, yo, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> You're never getting a boyfriend now. <laughs> never getting a boyfriend now. I was saying, yo, you're going to have to rebrand. No, I d- honestly don't think I'd be on one of those. You'd have to rebrand. Be a whole nun for like uh, eight years. <laughs> eight years. And then come back like, ah, God said I got to. <laughs> no, man, I'm not on any of those. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, just no. Well, I would, I would shed a tear. I would then I shed a tear like fuck. Well, you won't have to shed any tears because I'm not on them. I hope so. I, okay. I, I haven't been in listening to any of those things. Do they even still exist? I believe so. I think guys, if there's like a tight group of guys who would be smacked. Didn't you say when you went to Tossin, there's a group of guys who recorded and they have a whole bunch of things? That was their friend group, though. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure there's like a larger database of guys just slanging dick and getting holes. Oh. And then now. Your face is one of those. It's like, fuck, I follow her too. <laughs> and they have an Instagram page. But I'm just saying, you brought up the fact that cops have like brought up a Facebook group. I'm so like, you know what? There's like, back in the day, they used to do the same thing for girls. Uh-huh. And it was like a whole bunch of just girls that were on the GTA that guys said, yo, they smashed. And then they, and they were like, yo, I met her at McDonald's. I bought her a McChicken. And I brought her over to the crib. And she just gave it up. Or this one, you had to smoke a little licks, puff a little weed. And then, you know, she just went like that. And... You know, or she traveled all the way from Ajax to Brampton. <laughs> so this this one this one is really about it, about it. I'm so you know, they're they're describing on certain girls. I'm like, that's right. crazy. You know, like when you think about it too, like even though people think like the GTA is all somehow connected and shit, like it's actually really far if you think about it. Like Fuckin think far. about like dating like me if I was dating someone all the way from like Ajax or Pickering or Scarborough. Like that's far as fuck. Like, I'll go maybe to, like, I mean, I did Scarborough once, but that's, that's it. That's, that was even too far. It's enough. I had this one chick. She was from Ajax. I never, I only went to Ajax one to drop her off. Mm-hmm. But all the times I've seen her, she always been like halfway. I never. Yeah. Or she came to my house. I never. Someone told me, well, someone, someone from Brampton told me Vaughn was the furthest they would go. I was like, yeah, it's pretty far if you think about it. Mississauga, I like to stay in my region. Like yeah. Mississauga, Milton, Brampton, those are all within like 20, 30 minutes. You need something realistic because something realistic where you can actually see them often enough or like if you last minute want to hang out or yeah. something. Like, because if you last minute want to hang out with me and you live in Scarborough, good think luck. Think about it. Sometimes you might go over to the person's house, sleep, wake up three yeah. o'clock in the morning. And then and you have to drive all the way back. And it's like, and it's like yeah. fuck and that. And you go drive all the way back. You come back. Your mom's with your mom's yeah. already ready. And then she's like, well, you come back home this time? I was like, Phew. Yeah, no. Yeah, like, I, need to, I need you to live kind of close. Milton, Mississauga, Brampton. Milton's close to you? Yeah. Where, oh. I, where I live, Milton is like, honestly, I can do 20 North York. Not even 20 minutes. Like right there. 
I Georgetown can do, as well. Georgetown's like, really close. I could do like North York, Yorkdale area. Yeah. Um, like actually no, Brampton is just not even allowed. Ah, okay. <laughs> Brampton's right beside Vine, so. <laughs> yeah, and it's just not even allowed. Oh, so. <laughs> Making a hard um, on Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I think we're done now, anyways. Yeah. We've okay. got a, a solid 54 minutes. Not bad. All right, then, people. This has been another episode of the Educating the Reckless podcast with your host, Apollo P. And no better, Nina. And we'll be back again next week. Uh, giving you the good times. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <Remember>? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>